The modulated radio frequency current coming from the modulator goes to the power tubes. The power tubes amplify this current, which then goes to the antenna. There's no greater love than what an electromagnetic wave has for inducing current in a wire. But what shapes will keep you together forever, and which shapes will ghost you the instant you turn a corner? Let's rate some wires! Our first wire isn't a wire at all. It's the EP2 style receiver, identified by their nano size and iconic Molex tower antenna. These captivated pilots everywhere as Team 2.4 Express LRS exploded onto the scene last year. Second, we have an alternative onboard antenna design using a fancy new chip antenna, which promises to be faster because it is more red. Next, we have our first full-size external antenna for the best reception, but still does not have an LNA. An LNA is an external amplifier chip which boosts all signals coming into the receiver. This means it boosts the incoming transmitter signal, but also increases any other signal too. Since it doesn't discriminate Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signals from the Express LRS signal, the unknown here is if boosting all signals makes ours easier to hear, and that's why we have receiver number four here. This has the amplifier, but instead of a full dipole, it has an FR Sky RXSR wire antenna. You've seen these before, right? Almost done. Uh, this one has the LNA, but a dipole antenna, and from this we can determine if the dipole makes any difference over the simpler antenna style, which might be easier to integrate into your build. Does diversity make a difference? If both antennas are arranged together like this, absolutely not. Orientation of the transmitter and the receiver are fixed for this test, so neither antenna has a better view of the signal. Diversity is only useful if the different antennas have different polarizations or one antenna can be blocked. Let's talk a little bit about the, about the testing procedure. All the receivers are here inside this concrete block house uh, connected to the computer. Well, I took the transmitter uh, at 100 milliwatts on fixed output power uh, and took a walk around the pond here. The distance from to the end of the pond from the house is about 100 meters. Um, it doesn't seem that far, but we're inside a concrete house and shooting through this nightmare for 2.4 gigahertz. It's all Florida swamp here, uh, very dense growth. Uh, so it's really difficult to get a signal all the way inside the house to the outside. Uh, at 100 milliwatts, it seems to make it most of the time, though. And I can sit inside. Um, just took this little quick circuit here and then brought it back inside. Not much to it. Now let's mention what the data is we're actually looking at here. Uh, there's six receivers receiving from one transmitter at the same time. You may have noticed in the Express LRS documentation, it says anything with your bind phrase receives your data. And that means at the same time too, you can have six receivers receiving from one transmitter uh, all at the same time because they all have the same binding phrase, but you can't have telemetry coming back because they'll all fight each other for which telemetry is going to be received. So you just turn telemetry off and you can run six receivers off the same thing. And for every packet that's received by the receiver, it spits out the packet ID that's being sent by the transmitter, the RSSI, the link quality, and the signal to noise ratio. And we get that for all receivers at the same time. This isn't multiple flights comparing the same path against you know multiple receivers. This is one flight received by all six receivers at the exact same time. So guaranteeing that they all have the same chance of receiving data. Uh, and you can see here that in this link quality graph, there are some winners and losers. So we have one receiver that stands out as being really bad compared to the rest. Um, and then there's two tiers of other ones. Uh, this one, unfortunately, is that beautiful red chip antenna, uh, that new, so the new antenna that's a little flatty, uh, that's on some receivers now. Um, you can see here, it just doesn't do a very good job at all. I mean, it's dropping link quality before any of the other ones, and then the link completely goes dead for a while before uh, picking back up again and catching up. And then you can see where other ones aren't even struggling at all. I mean, it's getting down, you know, down in the 20s, um, probably 25 or so before coming back up and joining the rest of the crew. It's just, it's just not a good antenna at all. Um, and then you can see next up on the list, uh, we have at, at an average of 78 link quality. Uh, that's the diversity receiver. It's an FM30, um, C FM30. It used to be really good. I'm not really sure why this is performing so poorly. Um, it seems like the LNA might be burned out or something. Uh, it's been around a while, but this is the this chip antenna. It's the first time this antenna has ever been used. Um, the, the FM30 is about over a year old now. Um, coming in next after that uh, would be the EP2 receiver with the ceramic antenna. You can see it. It's in, it's in the it's in a lower tier class. I mean, this is this orange one is garbage class. Don't use this antenna. Um, the blue is the light blue is not very good. The EP2, eh, it's kind of okay. It's, it's at the top of the second tier, um, but it doesn't do nearly as well as these other ones do up here.
So let's talk about our top tier antennas, this dark purple, these, uh, this pinky purple and the light purple here. Uh, the bottom antenna in that group, although just barely at 93.1 average link quality, is this pink uh, line here. Um, and you can see it does quite well on link quality as well. It's the monopole antenna with the amplifier. So it's just the old FR Sky wire antenna uh, attached to a receiver with an LNA. And I think the LNA makes up for the fact that maybe the monopole is not the best receiver, uh, just kind of makes up the gap on it. Uh, or maybe the FR Sky antennas are just all that good and we've been giving them crap for too long about them because their receivers weren't all that good. So let's talk about who came in second place here, this dark purple line uh, just barely coming in second place. Uh, that is the dipole antenna without an LNA. So it doesn't have an amplifier, but it just has a dipole antenna. And you can see, I mean, I'm just shocked at how good a job this does. I thought it would be, you know, somewhere in the middle here uh, above the EP2 with, uh, which doesn't have an amplifier either, but you know, with a better antenna on it. I thought it'd be kind of in the middle. And you can see compared to uh, the other ones that it's RSSI is always slightly lower. Uh, the dark purple is always slightly lower than the pink in the other purple, um, indicating that it's getting slightly worse signal, but somehow ended up with slightly better RSSI. Uh, and all these receivers have the same components in them. They all have the same RF chip and the same microcontroller. The only difference is the, res the receiving antenna here. And you can see that even at lower RSSI, RSSI, you can actually get slightly better link quality. So let's talk about our winner then, this medium purple. Uh, you can see in the RSSI graph, there's clearly one receiver that's always on top of all the other receivers. And that makes sense because this receiver is the one with the dipole antenna and the LNA. I mean, it's got everything going for it and it shows. It easily breezes through this test. Um, it's the winning configuration. If you've got space for it, you know, go with something that has an LNA and use a dipole antenna over the, you know, embedded antennas. Okay, quick conclusions then. Don't buy that flat antenna. The tower ceramic antenna is okay. Anything with an external antenna beats it. An external antenna plus LNA FTW. A link to the raw data and a better image is in the description.